Hello, today we're going to look at how we can design a spread footing for residential use in ClearCalx. So I've created a spread footing calculator and now we're going to hop right into it. So you can see when we load, we tell you all our assumptions with the design and this is based off of ACI 318 2014 edition. Going down, you can see a nice picture from up above of our footing, and then you'll see a bunch of numbers on the right. They might look a little scary, but I promise you, they're not that bad. We're gonna go through them today. So first thing to do is that we're gonna go down on the left. On the left is where you'll have all your inputs. We're gonna go down and we're gonna set all the things that probably won't change over the design process. So your footing width, length, thickness, these probably will, so we'll come back to these later. Your construction type, reinforced concrete, or if this is just gonna be a plain concrete, as is often seen as residential houses. Right now, we'll keep it as re reinforced concrete. We'll keep the concrete strength at 2,500 PSI and it's normal weight concrete. Our column properties. So we've got here a generic column with steel base plates. You see the 5.5 .5 here. So we've probably got a six by six wooden post that's sitting on an eight by eight steel base plate. You can see it here. Next, we'll look at our swell properties the gross bearing capacity so that's the bearing capacity given by the code that you can resist uh, vertically in your soil or you might have this from a geotechnical report we'll leave it at 1500 since that's the lowest allowed by the code so we're usually pretty safe sticking with that now as i said this is probably a wooden post that's uh, supported on a steel base plate so we probably wouldn't have this wooden post underground so what we'll do is we can set the depth of soil over footing to zero feet because our post it might be at the ground level then when we do this there's no soil over the footing we don't have to care about this this is where you would enter your unit weight of soil if it was different than 100 pounds per cubic foot and if you actually had soil over your footing it won't really affect anything else otherwise finally we've got our coefficient of friction this is often given by the codes or by geotechnical reports we're using 0.3 by default since that's pretty conservative what that's going to do is it's going to help resist lateral loads from winds or earthquake and prevent your footing from sliding around on the soil. Next, we've got our bottom reinforcement. This is what's going to be helping your footing resist bending loads. So first thing we're going to look at is the concrete cover. The ACI code specifies three inches minimum, so that's usually what we'll leave it at for uh, residential footings. For the yield strength, usually we'll have 60,000, but in some areas it might still be 40,000. PSI yield strength rebar. So that's something that you'll wanna make sure that you set correctly. Next, we've got the reinforcement coating. So either it's not coated or we also look at epoxy coated rebar. The epoxy coated, that's the green rebar. I can change it and you'll see it changes green. Next is the bar size. We'll often see number five in residential footings, but it's quickly easy to change to number three, number four, all the way to number 18 if you're feeling courageous. The bar count, that's probably going to change as we design, so we're not gonna touch that for now. Finally, your ends of the reinforcement, you might want to have your reinforcement hooked. That's gonna help with the development length, which we'll talk about later. And it might also help for assembling the rebar, if you, especially if you have rebar at the top as well. That's the next thing, if we have top reinforcement. In general, for residential footing, we might not need top reinforcement. That's just because there's not really any big moment loads that are gonna put the top of the footing in bending. So generally, we don't really consider it. However, if you did want to include it, you could click yes, and then you can set all those settings for that. Next, we've got our factors of safety for overturning and sliding. These are often specified by the code, but you might also see these be specified somewhere else. You can change these as you want. Next is the big one, the loads. The first thing we ask you is if your biaxial moments are applied separately or simultaneously. Basically, all this means is if you've got wind, in north direction and the east direction, do we apply them at the same time, so simultaneously, or one at a time? Now that we've set this by actual moments, let's look at the actual loads. So by default, we've got our dead and occupancy loads. So this might be a footing that's only supporting one or two floors. In this case, we've actually already got a column in our project that's supporting some loads. So we're not actually going to use the default loads here. So we're just gonna delete this row and we'll create a new one. So in this case, it will be column load. And there won't be any eccentricity on here. And now what we'll do, instead of inputting our load magnitudes here, which we could do, we're gonna link our column. So we click the link button, we add our column, and we add the support here so we can see a 30,000 pound vertical reaction when it's all added up together. 
and we can validate here in this case, we've got a 10,200 uh, vertical load from the dead load and a 20,000 pound live load applied on this footing. So now that this is done, we could also add moments if we wanted to, but in this case, we won't. This would be say from a wind case or if you had a special connection that required carrying moment. So now that we've got these, our loads are probably not gonna change. These are all things that probably won't change. So let's scroll all the way back to the top now. And the first thing we're gonna do now in designing our footing is we wanna look at the bearing stress. So as we had discussed earlier, we've got a 1,500 pounds per square foot allowable bearing stress. And then right above, you can see we're at 878 pounds per square foot. So what that means is we can make our footing smaller and reduce our concrete cost. So let's do that. So let's go to five feet. And now you'll see we've got a rectangular footing. What we can do here for the footing length to save time is instead of entering five, we can just type B. And what it'll do is it'll just use the B value right above, like an Excel calculation, and it will update it automatically. So actually, it looks like I got lucky, I put in five feet, and now we're at 1,470 pounds per square foot, and our level is 1,500 pounds per square foot. So that's at 98% utilization. So we're good, we're actually right at the limit, which is perfect, that means we've got our most efficient footing possible. Next, we're gonna look at our footing thickness, and that's what's gonna govern the shear demand. So this is, these four cells here. So you can see the one-way shear and the two-way shear. We're gonna look at this and basically the only thing that's gonna affect the capacity, so this one and this one, is the footing thickness. So you can see here we're at 9%, here we're at 15%. We can make our footing much thinner. So we can go say 14 inches. And if we look at what this does, we're still at 27%, 38%. Now. This is starting to be a pretty thin footing, so we wanna be mindful of this. You'll also notice that our bearing stress has gone down, and that's because a thinner footing is obviously lighter, so we might even be able to shrink it up a little bit, but we'll keep it to five feet by five feet for now. Now, if we go down to say 12 inches, that's probably as low as we'll want to go for this. Lower than 12 inches, and it's starting to be a pretty thin footing. So. We've got a pretty thin footing. We've got our width, our length, our thickness done. At this point, everything is green here. You can see we've basically finished our footing. What we might wanna do, however, is we can scroll down. You can see our rebar profile. You might wanna scroll down and say, hmm, actually, so here we can see I've got four num or five number five bars this way, five number five bars the other way. You might actually decide, okay, I don't want more than five bars. So you can see here, we've got these formulas, N, X, min, and Y, min. And that's basically, we calculate for you the number of bars that you want in your footing. But if you want to say, put more bars just to feel better, we can put in six, just type in six and six. So one thing that we notice here is that in the moment demand, as you can see, we're only at 37% and at 41% in both directions. And what this tells us is that our reinforcement, which we looked at here, we have too much reinforcement, basically. We're not using it very efficiently. And the reason for that is we might be limited by something like the minimum spacing or something like that in the footing that we have to respect. So one thing that we could look at instead, and this is often done for residential footings, is to design it as plain concrete instead. So what we can do here is we can just click the plain concrete button and all of a sudden, we're not gonna be considering our reinforcement anymore. And now you can see our moment demand is much higher. So we're at 174%, so we're failing right now. But this is actually pretty easy to fix. We increase our thickness, let's go to 16 inches. And now you can see we're at 89%. So we've added four inches more of concrete, but now we don't have to use any reinforcement. So this might actually be a lot more economical. That's something that you'll want to decide as an engineer or as a designer, how you want to handle this. One might be more economical in some situations, the other might be economical in more other situations, but it's certainly something to look at when you design in your footings. So with this, I think this concludes our residential footing design tutorial. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions and we hope you enjoy ClearCalcs. Thank you very much.